There's Murray's best poem. Poem of the week number 38, Noonday Axeman by Les Murray, 1938 to 2019. First published on the 22nd of February, 2023. Noonday Axeman. Axfall, echo and silence. Noonday silence. Two miles from here, it is the 20th century. Cars on the bitumen, power lines vaulting the farms. Here, with my axe, I am chopping into the stillness. Axe fall, echo and silence. I pause, roll tobacco, twist a cigarette, lick it. All is still. I lean on my axe. A cloud of fragrant leaves hangs over me moveless, pierced everywhere by sky. Here, I remember all of a hundred years. Candle flame, still night, frost and cattle bells. The dray wheel's silence final in our ears and the first red cattle spreading through the hills and my great-great-grandfather, here with his first sons who would grow old, still speaking with his Scots accent and having never seen those highlands that they sang of. A hundred years, I stand and smoke in the silence. A hundred years of clearing, splitting, sawing. A hundred years of timbermen, ring barkers, fences and women in kitchens stoking loud iron stoves year in, year out and singing old songs to their children have made this silence human and familiar. No farther than where the farms rise into foothills and in that time how many have sought their graves or fled to the cities maddened by this stillness. Things are so wordless. These two opposing scarves I have cut in my red gum squeeze out jewels of sap and stare. And soon, with a few more axe strokes, the tree will go troubled, tremble, shift its crown and, leaning slowly, gather speed and colossally crash down and lie between the standing trunks. And then, I know, of the knowledge that led my forebears to drink and black rage and wordlessness, there will be silence. After the tree falls, there will reign the same silence that stuns and spurns us, enraptures and defeats us. There seems to some a challenge and seems to others to be waiting here for something beyond imagining. Acts fall, echo and silence, unhuman silence. A stone cracks in the heat. Through the still twigs, radiance stings at my eyes. I rub a damp brow with a handkerchief and chop on into the stillness. Acts fall and echo. The great mast murmurs now. The scarves in its trunk crackle and squeak now. Crack and increase as the hushing weight of the high branches heals outward and commences tearing and falling. And the collapse is tremendous. Twigs fly. Leaves puff and subside. The severed trunk slips off its stump and drops along its shadow. And then there is no more. The stillness is there, as ever. And I fall to lopping branches. Axe fall, echo, and silence. It will be centuries before many men are truly at home in this country. And yet, there have always been some in each generation. There have always been some who could live in the presence of silence. And some, I have known them. Men with gentle, broad hands who would die if removed from these unpeopled places. Some again I have seen, bemused and shy in the cities. You have built against silence. Dumbly, trudging through noise, past the railway stations, looking up through the traffic at the smoky halls, dreaming of journeys, of stepping down from the train at some upland stop to recover, the crush of dry grass underfoot, the silence of trees. Axe fall, echo and silence, dreaming silence. Though I myself run to the cities, I will forever be coming back here to walk, knee deep in the ferns, up and away from this metropolitan century to remember my ancestors, axemen, dairymen, horsebreakers now coffined in silence, down with their beards and dreams, who unwilling or rapt, despairing or very patient, made what amounts to a human breach and the silence. Made of their lives the rough foundation of legends, men must have legends, or else they'll die of strangeness, then died in their turn, each after his own fashion, resigned or agonised from silence into great silence. 
Axe fall, echo, and axe fall, noonday silence. Though I go to the cities, turning my back on these hills, for the talk and dazzle of cities, for the sake of belonging for months and years at a time to the 20th century, the city will never quite hold me. I will be always coming back here on the up train, peering, leaning out of the window to see, on far off ridges, the sky between the trees, and over the racket of the rails to hear the echo and the silence. I shoulder my axe and set off home through the stillness. I've heard it said that falling in love is never quite as wonderful as the first time. That's a bit hard for me to evaluate with human relations, but how true it is with so many poets that I have read. This was the first Murray poem that really transfixed me, and although I have come to love a number of other poems from his work, after all the time that has passed, no other stands out quite as dearly to me as Noonday Axman out of his first collection, The Ilex Tree, from 1965. Is it his best poem, or simply my favourite? Or is that perhaps just the same question? Form. 21 unrhymed stanzas, all of which are quatrains, with the exception of the last, which is a couplet. There is no particular metrical pattern. Analysis. The poet is chopping a tree down, and the poem presents itself as a contemplation within the silent pauses of the axe strokes. His first meditation is on the relative manifestations of time. Here, on the outskirts of no man's land where countryside meets bush, time stands effectively still, while only a short distance away, the vicissitudes of the 20th century churn on. As the boundary of time vanishes, so is Murray reminded of his pioneer ancestors who colonised this part of Australia. Quote, Here I remember all of a hundred years, candle flame, still night, frost and cattle bells, the dray wheel silence final in our ears and the first red cattle spreading through the hills and my great-great-grandfather here with his first sons who would grow old, still speaking with his Scots accent, having never seen those highlands that they sang of. A hundred years, I stand and smoke in the silence. The poem then turns to contemplate the immense silence of this place. It is something inimical that drives people away or makes them mad. So Murray wants to celebrate the heroism of people like his ancestors who confronted it and made an effort to civilise it. A hundred years of clearing, splitting, sawing, a hundred years of timbermen, ring barkers, fences and women in kitchens stoking loud iron stoves year in, year out and singing old songs to their children have made this silence human and familiar. No farther than where the farms rise into foothills and in that time how many have sought their graves or fled to the cities maddened by this stillness. The poet realises that with the last axe knock that will finally fell the tree, he will also have to confront this silence full on. Although that is something terrifying, beyond it, there is a mystical attraction to it as well. After the tree falls, there will reign the same silence that stuns and spurs us, and raptures and defeats us, as seems to some a challenge and seems to others to be waiting here for something beyond imagining. Murray muses that though most people require a civilization building up against this awesome silence, there is also a minority who need and seek it. Axe fall, echo and silence. It will be centuries before many men are truly at home in this country, and yet there have always been some in each generation. There have always been some who could live in the presence of silence. In the last meditation of the poem, Murray indicates that though he has great reverence for such people, he is not really one of them himself. He admits that he too feels compelled to flee to the 20th century. And yet that alluring silence is something that always calls him back. Writing of this mystery, here come perhaps the most beautiful stanzas Murray ever wrote. Axe fall, echo and silence, dreaming silence. Though I myself run to the cities, I will forever be coming back here to walk knee-deep in ferns, up and away from this metropolitan century to remember my ancestors, axemen, dairymen, horsebreakers, now coffined in silence, down with their beards and dreams who unwilling or rapt, despairing or very patient, made what amounts to a human breach in the silence. 
made of their lives the rough foundation of legends. Men must have legends or else they'll die of strangeness. Then died in their turn, each after his own fashion, resigned or agonised from silence into great silence. At the end of the poem, the job of felling the tree is done. And I like to think that the axeman slinging his axe on his shoulder and walking off is also Murray the poet, putting the pen down and moving on to do something else. <laughs>